I like through the trees, bright light. Let me feel sweet lies, favor you, bright light. Let me How flies leave from me? Goodbye. Now you're free. Oh, feel it coming. Oh.
I thought Camp Update 11 would be the last one, if I'm honest. And I genuinely did think that. That's why I called it the final chapter. But I think I'm genuinely addicted to adventure, to be honest. It's, it's hard to explain. I thought I'd be finished with the camp and I could just use it for, you know, my catch and cook videos and things that I've done and just general bushcraft videos. But there's something in me. I think it's ever since I was a kid, I've always wanted to be building things. I always had you know, Lego and things like that. I was always building Lego, um, Meccano, Connects, you know, those of you guys out there would know, hopefully most of you would know about those sort of things. And that, that, ever since then really, since such a young age, I've always wanted to build stuff. So I think that's why the adventure really continues with this camp because I can still use it. You know, I can still do all the things that I want to do in it, but it's just nice to be able to add to it every now and then. And it stimulates my mind and gets me thinking about different things I can add to it. So. Hopefully you enjoyed um, you know, that, that sort of uh, building process there. I know it's quite lengthy where I didn't talk, but for those of you that watch my videos now will, will know that for some of them I do actually uh, just do a kind of silent intro and just you know, to, to build up the atmosphere really. Uh, and then I come into the talking part. So what I'm gonna do like the other camp update videos is uh, give you a, a tour sort of really of what, of what I've done. There's, there's nothing major really that I've built except the, teepee, the tiki kitchen, I'm gonna call it. That's really awesome. Uh, but other than that, I've made a few tweaks, actually thanks to some of the subscribers, so let's go take a look. So looking at it from this angle, uh, for those that watch regularly will recognise my hunting tower, which I built in the previous camp update, camp update 11. Um, and a subscriber basically said with these walls here, which were, this was one wall on the inside of the camp itself, he said, why don't you build around your hunting tower so that you've got more space in the camp? Um, I can't remember your name, good sir, but I do remember your comment and I thank you for that. And that's exactly what I did. I've basically moved the wall from the inside, added two walls from the outside, and I've now got about a metre squared space um, underneath my hunting tower, which is brilliant. I'll go and show you now. Apologies for the darkness, guys. It's actually getting towards dusk now. We're well into autumn. 
uh, and obviously the light's starting to fade. But this is the space I was on about. Previously I had a wall just straight across here. Um, and, and just space underneath my hunt, hunting tower that was completely unused space. So thank you to that subscriber who said, why don't you move the walls around the outside of it? I now have a kind of little cubby hole really that's that's I can use for storage. I put my sawhorse in here uh, just to keep it dry really and to prolong the wood. But I'm thinking of maybe adding a little bench here because it's super dry. It's got the roof of the hunting tower and the floor of the hunting tower and no water really gets in. This is all super dry where it's been uh, raining the last few days. So maybe a little bench here, who knows? I've got space away from the ladder. I always keep my ladder, you know, uh, I can move it so I can use it around the camp. I don't want to have it fixed on the floor or fixed to the hunting tower itself. I want to be able to move my ladder. This is actually previously Jax's kind of doghouse, but I figured now that I have that space underneath the hunting tower, I could always make a little bed or a house for Jax, my dog to sleep in. But inevitably he's small he'll come and sleep with me on my raised bed over there probably so what i've done is just any off cuts of wood where i've been sawing uh, i've stored in here and now i've added a bit of black tarp up here which just keeps them completely dry all of this all of this wood now is completely dry it's not rotten wood um, it is dead but it's not rotten yet so it'll burn you know completely fine uh, but by having that tarp above there it just prevents all of this lot from getting wet and now whenever I'm in camp and I need to either have small fires or just get the fire going with a feather stick, I've got the right diameter wood here to just batten down and then start doing feather sticks so it's all accessible. And then still any off cuts I have with my sawhorse I just put up here. And this is the pièce de résistance. I think I've got that right anyway. This is, I'm going to call it a tiki kitchen or tiki bar. It's, it's got that tiki style to it. As most of you know from watching our videos, this platform here it's kind of our serving platform, uh, food prep area, or kitchen really. Um, and it's, it's not, you can't see this, but it's not actually underneath the tarp, this table. So if it did rain, we tend, you know, a, a bit of our gear did tend to get wet. So what I've done is just build a little tiki roof, all out of dead wood. This is all dead wood, no live trees cut down. Uh, those ones you saw me cutting down were dead. There's so much dead fall and dead standing wood around here. Just lashed on together with a bit of jute twine, not the strongest stuff, but there's not much weight on this, no one's standing on it. And then at the top, a row of sticks, and I filled it with sphagnum moss, um, which obviously is going to retain that water and just prevent it from dripping down. It will still drip down through it, but not as much because that moss will then grow into that dead wood. It will, the roots of the moss will, you know, grow into the wood itself and it will make it much more secure and much more watertight, really. So there you go, that's, that's pretty much everything for the update, Camp Update 12. Um, there's, uh, you know, it, it wasn't the major project as such like it was with the Camp Update 11, which was the big project, the hunting tower, but it's still, you know, it's still pretty cool and, and I like camp, you know, I like coming here. I like um, just building things really and, and listening to some of your comments and adding what you guys, your input, you know, it means a lot to me. So any comments you have and things you'd like to see at the camp, maybe just pop in the video description below, I'd really appreciate it. Just so you know, it's about 24th of October when this is being filmed. We're experiencing a really mild spell here in the UK. I'm in England. And it's meant that, obviously, the leaves are still fairly green. They are turning and falling. Uh, but it's meant that te the temperatures themselves are up. I think we had 18 degrees today. And tonight, it's, not, it's only forecasted to go down to about um, 10 or 11, 12, maybe 12 degrees overnight. So I've actually got my summer sleeping bag with me. I'm going to do an overnighter here. I've got plans to cook up a steak. Uh, I've got a beer to have. And also I've got a little carving project that I'm doing. I've brought a spoon with me that I'm going to carve. So hopefully if you're still with me, I appreciate it. You can join me and uh, we'll share a good time together. Maybe crack a beer open, who knows? If you're under 18, don't crack a beer. Crack open an orange juice or something like that. Anyway, it's getting dark. I want to get the fire going and relax. One more thing I forgot to mention is actually my chopping log. Uh, I found this big piece of pine here. This is Scott's pine. And the problem I had with my previous log, which is here, if you can see this, it's very uneven. If I can twist it for you, you can see, look, that's not level at all and it's gonna be very hard to level. Well, not very hard, I could just saw it flat, but it's pretty rotten, this wood now. And you can see from there how far we buried it in the ground before. And unfortunately, it just makes cutting a bit unstable. So what I did is I've got, a, found a piece of this pine, which is much flatter, a little bit wider as well, it's more secure. And I drove this stake into the ground, just, just with the back of the ax, just drove it into the ground really deep buried the log as well and then just lashed some twine around it and now it's absolutely rigid I can't really move that at all so 
just a bit more of a stronger and safer really chopping block. So this is the battening block we made recently with my dad here at the camp and I've had a lot of questions, a few questions lately about A my knife, what is it? And B, should I, you know, what am I doing when I'm hitting it with wood, with sticks? Is it going to damage it? But this is the knife, just quickly so you guys know, because I've had a lot of questions about it. Uh, it's a Virtus Utilis, made by a guy called Sam, a uh, Canadian knife maker. It's a full tang knife, which means the metal, the steel, goes all the way through the knife. If this will focus on me. And he's done lovely file work there as well, which you can see he's done that with a file. Um, which is unbelievable. It's got black liners. Uh, for me, it's it's a fairly heavy blade because, you know, it's it's not exactly the cheapest blade in the world. It's but you you know you pay for quality gear. If you want quality gear, you're gonna have to pay for it. Scandinavian grind. There's the Virtus logo there. Um, it is heavy. It is fairly thick, and that's because for me I wanted a thick blade at the moment because for battening work, you know, it's it's got good length. It's about eight inches overall, I think. So it's a four inch blade. Uh, and four inch handle here. I've done a full review of this knife on my channel somewhere and there's some really nice mosaic pins if you just see them there. It's a lovely blade and Sam's a really nice guy. And that, that's the reason I can bat with this and hit the spine of the knife and because it's the steel goes all the way through so you know it, it's strong it's got it's going to be durable so hopefully that explains it for you guys but uh, so what I've got here is that dry wood that I've stored inside like I showed you this, this pine is a bit rotten down here, but it should be okay. And all I like to do is just tend to batten on this part of the blade, near the choil, near the, your fingers. So that I've got an overhang this side to then hit the stick down onto. And you don't have to hit hard. In fact, to get a straighter cut, better to tap it a few times. Like that, and then you can start to hit harder. This is a really twisty grain already, I can see. Really twisty. Look at that. Look how twisted that is. Twisty grain's quite hard to bat on. Whew, that's tricky. Pine tends to get a fire going fairly fast because it's full of resin, it's a soft wood. And I have so much of it available in this woodland. You've got to use the resources that are around you. I do have a bit of birch as well, silver birch. If I have switched lenses, it looks really bright because I've got a f1.8 lens on the camera. But it's not, trust me, it's getting darker. I'm just getting everything ready. Whoop. I think we're there.
So this is the spoon that I'm currently carving. Oh, it's a piece of, I think it's ash actually that I got from from home. I made a start on it already. You can see I've drawn the shape. Guys, I'm no professional spoon carver. I just outlined the kind of spoon there. Uh, I've got my Mora 120, this is. Wood carving knife. All the carvers out there will know this blade. Uh, and all the Mora fans obviously will know this blade. Really, really nice knife for just, just doing a chest lever grip. So. I'm holding the 120, the Mora, the carving knife or whatever, in my chest like this, and I'm not moving it. I'm not moving the knife at all, it's not coming out, it's not gonna do any damage tucked in here. Then I'm just shaping the back of the spoon. I've made the bowl already, I'll show you roughly how I did that in a minute, but I'm just thinning out these, this sort of thicker bit of the spoon. And it's just, I'm using the spoon, if anything, and I'm pulling the wood against the the knife itself, the knife is just staying there. All I'm doing is keeping my knife in position and turning the wood. Now this wood, to be honest, it's not very green anymore, so it's making it quite difficult because it's dried out a fair amount. It's not got that moisture in, which I'd prefer, a bit greener wood, but it's working. You know, I can do the chest lever grip and still take off that material nice and easily. Obviously, when I'm coming down to here, this part I can still chest lever, and this is where it's a bit dry, the wood, but like I say, I'm no uh, expert carver, guys. I'm just, a, I'm just a guy in the woods enjoying my time. I know, it's just a spoon knife or a crook knife, basically, and it's got the blade on this side. So there, you can just see the bevel of the blade there. And this is actually just for carving out the bowl part of the spoon, and it just fits in. It's a bit difficult for me to show you like this, but I will try. Just doing little motions, sort of scooping motions to scoop. Just doing scooping motions really to scoop out the bolt. I don't know what I'm doing really guys, I'm just, you know, having a go and that's the main thing I think, is just get out there and have a go at these sort of things. I'm just having a go, that's all I'm doing, I'm not a professional at all. There's some very, very good green woodworkers out there who will be absolutely slating what I'm doing right now, but doing my best to try and show you to the camera as well. But that's basically how the crook knife works, just carving away. And I'm, I I want a fairly deep bowl on this spoon because I, I want that fluid, whatever fluid I put in there, to stay in there. So I've gone for a pretty deep bowl, but I've almost finished the bowl, to be honest, and I'm now on to shaping the little spoon. Awesome. 21 day matured, that bad boy. Okay, got me some oak aged, or actually, bourbon barrel scotch ale, the good old innocent gun, fast becoming my favorite beer. Last time I did this, it went, the bottle cap went miles. Oh, this one wasn't too bad. Beer and steak. Cheers, guys. I think I've cooked it a little bit too long, boys. Whoa. I char grilled that, that's a well done steak. That side anyway. 
Other side's alright. Whoops. Look, meat is meat. Steak is steak. Beer is beer. Excuse the lighting guys, it's now pretty much pitch black. And I'd say the steak is done to be honest. Just trying to kick the legs under a bit, then the grill. Use the two sticks like that to kind of raise it up a bit. I'm just gonna eat straight off the grill. I definitely cooked it far too much. That is a well done steak, but yeah, that's really well done. But I don't mind because food is food and I've had a busy day. Look at that, it's like white, it's like chicken. The innocent gun is going down a tree. Highly recommend this to well, anyone in the UK, it's widely available. Don't know about the rest of the world, but it's up, brewed up in Scotland. Um, this is the original, it's called, by Innocent Gum. All barrel-aged beers and stuff. Awesome stuff. <laughs> Basically trying to use a, my lantern, my storm lantern, and a head torch as well. I'm trying to get, otherwise I get shade on one side like that. I can put it on the front, but then it's really bright for me, so. Fake light on, the, on the, my left-hand side. And then real light a bit on my right hand side, so we're in there. We're okay. The focus is pulling a bit on the camera, so sorry about that. Uh, go on, focus. There we go. So I'm about to hit the sheets, guys. It's about 10:30 now. Have my steak, have my beer. I'm not gonna lie, I'm pretty tired after all that building and moving stuff around and things. So, I've got my sleeping bag. It's not cold. It's not cold at all. It's still in double figures, so it should be fine tonight. Uh, plan is really tomorrow is finish off my spoon. Finish off the spoon carving, have some breakfast, and then head on home. I don't really, I'm not really in the mood to be building any more tomorrow. Uh, but thank you very much if you're still watching the video, I really appreciate it. Um, let me know what you guys do in the woods. <clears throat> maybe you don't build camps and things, but maybe you go out and hammock camp or tarp camp on the ground, or you know, things like that. Build shelters, let me know in the comment section below, really appreciate it. But I'm going to hit the sheets, guys, and I'll catch up with you in the morning. I am up rather late this morning because I had a bit of a lie and it was so nice. It's now about 10 o'clock and the sun is well up and I'm going to enjoy this breakfast. Hmm. That's a good bacon. I think this morning I'm going to go and check the trail cam. I put up a trail cam the other day in this woodland uh, with Dad and I'm going to go and check it because I could hear some animals in the night. No idea what they were, probably deer or something like that, as there's plenty of deer in this woodland, but I definitely heard stuff moving around in the night uh, further down the woods that way, so I'll go and check the camera. I'll pop up into the hunting tower as well. I've brought some binoculars with me uh, just to have a look around and see what the so small game's doing, because in a few weeks I would like to come here and do some hunting. Sounds like we're boiling. Yep. Going for these, I've been using these a lot lately, these Jiva or Jiva coffee cubes, instant coffee cubes, they're really nice, this is a caramel one. And I did a video about them the other day actually, but I really rate them, I'm still using them. And this one, that was amazing, got it on the old cookser. So earlier this morning I didn't actually film because I wanted to enjoy the woodlands and not worry about filming and I finished carving my spoon. Yes, it's not a perfect spoon. I did actually bring a bit of sandpaper with me. But that's what it looks like. From this stage I'd obviously sand it down 
with probably 120, 130 grit sandpaper. Probably go down to 340 maybe. Sand it off. It's not perfect, but that's what I quite like about imperfect spoon carving. It makes it a bit more your own. Um, but will it hold liquid? This is the test. Well, look, it will stir. Stirs absolutely fine. And there we go. If I just get a bit more. Hopefully you guys can see that. Holding liquid, not dripping. Doing what a spoon should do. Therefore, look shouldn't matter. Pleased it works though. Mm. Coffee out of a spoon, lovely. Woodsman's gold. Mm. Tastes so much better in a cookster as well. Guys, that's my sleeping arrangement last night. All I had was literally foam mat, really cheap. Foam roll mat, or bed roll. And my summer bag, which is rated down to I think about six degrees. So last night, well, you might have seen on the trail cam what the temperature was last night. It says on the trail cam, but I think it was is in the double figures, that's for sure. Got a really good night's sleep, to be fair. This is covered, obviously, by moss, by logs, moss, and a tarp underneath, so I was completely dry. Well, I finished my spoon. I actually found a bit of sandpaper that I've kept in my bag in a little kit I've got, and that is the finished spoon. I know it's not, it's not perfect by any means. In fact, the handle needs a lot of work, but the main thing is, is it works. And that is my, I think it's ash, I want to say, I'm not sure. My ash spoon that was that was not very green when I was carving it, so I'm quite pleased with that, given that the wood wasn't wasn't really that green. Let me know what you guys carve. Do you guys carve spoons and things? It's really therapeutic out in the woods. I really enjoy it. Only been doing it recently, to be honest, but all good fun nonetheless. But I made it short so that it would uh, go into the backpack side pocket nice and easily. When I get home, I'd normally treat this with some beeswax, but I don't have any on me out here. Uh, I usually do in a kit, but I've run out in my little tub, so I'll just treat it when I get home with some beeswax. Soak it in it, let it soak overnight. And it's pretty much ready to use, even though I've already used it. Doesn't matter. Well guys, I've just opened up the trail cam and I said I heard something last night. I definitely heard activity in the woodland. I'm just gonna try and play back some footage to see that's me this morning. There's a little gray squirrel there this morning from the looks of it. We're on to the night. I can't see anything in that shot. Oh, there's a nice roe deer there. Definitely got a roe deer. Can't tell whether it's male or female from this small screen. Oh, and a fox. Again, don't know if it's male or female, but we've got a fox, roe deer. I can't see what's in that shot. It looks like it's picked up a number of different shots where it's been triggered. Early morning shot. There's a monk jack there as well from the looks of it. So multiple species and the fox again, so he's come back. And again, we're in this open clearing where I, if you watched my previous videos where I was with dad. So I knew there was activity. I'm pleased that there's something on there. And what I'll do now is I'll play that footage for you guys so you can see, you know, the, the, the type of animals, animals that actually triggered the camera last night. But I knew there was activity, so let's take a look at the clips.
Thanks very much for watching. If you're still around, I really appreciate it. Thank you for sticking by all this time. If you enjoyed the video, uh, I'd be really grateful if you could give it a thumbs up. And if you're not subscribed already, please hit that subscribe button and tick the little bell icon so that you can receive all notifications from the channel. Camp Update 12 is complete. Who knows what Camp Update 13 will be, whether there will be one or not. I sprung this upon you guys really uh, out of nowhere, so I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, let me know any suggestions for Camp Update 13, if there will be. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you soon in another video. Goodbye.